In this video, we're talking about exact differential equations. The first thing we're going to do is talk about what an exact differential equation actually is. Then we're going to talk about how to test to see whether or not an equation is an exact differential equation. And then if it's an exact differential equation, we're going to talk about how to find the solution to the exact differential equation. So in order for an equation to be an exact differential equation, it first has to be in this form here, where we have a multivariable function m. So we have a function m in terms of both x and y. Then we have addition. Then we have a function n in terms of x and y, which is multiplied by dy over dx. And that whole thing is equal to 0. Given an equation in this form, it may be an exact differential equation if it has a solution which we'll call psi of x, y, such that the partial derivative of psi with respect to x is equal to the function m of x, y from the original equation, so m of x, y, and if the partial derivative of psi with respect to y is equal to the function n of x, y. If we can find a function psi of x, y, where these partial derivatives are equal to the functions m and n, and the original equation was given in this form including m and n, then we can say that this equation is an exact differential equation. Now, we already said that psi of x, y was going to be the solution to this differential equation. So you could say, well, we just need to find psi of x, y. However, that's a somewhat tedious process. And the worst thing would be to go through the process of trying to find psi of x, y, only to figure out that you can't actually find it at all because this equation wasn't, in fact, an exact differential equation. So before we go about trying to find the solution psi of x, y to the differential equation, we want to test to see whether or not this is, in fact, an exact differential equation. And the test that we're going to use comes from these facts here, that the partial derivative of psi with respect to x has to be equal to the function m, and that the partial derivative of psi with respect to y has to be equal to the function n. So we can rewrite these partial derivatives. The partial derivative of psi with respect to x, we can rewrite as psi sub x. And the partial derivative of psi with respect to y, we can rewrite as psi sub y. Now, if we assume that psi of x, y is a continuous function, then we know that its mixed second order partial derivatives are equal to each other. In other words, when we take the partial derivative of psi with respect to x, and then we take the partial derivative of that with respect to y, or vice versa, those are the mixed second order partial derivatives. We know that those are equal to each other, assuming that psi of x, y is a continuous function. So if we say psi of x, y like this. This means the partial derivative of psi with respect to x, then with respect to y, or the partial derivative of psi with respect to y, then with respect to x. We know that these two are equal to one another. We can also rewrite these as the partial derivative of psi with respect to x, and then with respect to y again. Here we can say the partial derivative of psi with respect to y, and then with respect to x. Now we know that the partial derivative of psi with respect to x is equal to m, so we can call this m, y, and then we know that the partial derivative of psi with respect to y is equal to n. We know that from up here. So we can say n and then sub x, and then we can just call this the partial derivative of m with respect to y, and this the partial derivative of n with respect to x. In other words, because we know that these two things are equal to one another, we can also say that these two things are equal to one another. This whole thing here was just a proof to show you that if we take the partial derivative of m with respect to y and the partial derivative of n with respect to x, if they're equal to each other, then this is in fact an exact differential equation. So when you do these problems in the future, you don't have to worry about this whole thing. All you have to do is take the partial derivative of m with respect to y and the partial derivative of n with respect to x. If they're equal to each other, then you know this is an exact differential equation, and you can proceed with the solution. If they're not equal to one another, then you can say immediately that this is not an exact differential equation, and then you shouldn't even bother with finding the solution psi of x, y. So if we look at the differential equation we've been given here, we should be able to identify that m of x, y is going to be this function right here, that n of x, y is going to be this function right here. And so now we just need to take our partial derivatives. So the partial derivative of m with respect to y is going to be the partial derivative of this function here with respect to y. So that's going to be negative 2xy to the negative 2. Remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to y, which means we're holding x as a constant. So for this term, we bring this negative 1 out in front. Negative 1 times 2 gives us the negative 2. 
the x stays as a constant, then we subtract 1 from the exponent and negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Here, e to the 2x is just going to be a constant, so it's going to stay. The derivative of 2y is just 2, so we're just left with 2e to the 2x, and the derivative of negative 1 is 0. Now let's look at the partial derivative of n with respect to x. So taking the derivative of this function with respect to x, we get 2e to the 2x, the y squared becomes 0, and then we get negative 2xy to the negative 2. Now, if we compare these, we see that we have a negative 2xy to the negative 2 and a negative 2xy to the negative 2. Then we can see that we have a positive 2e to the 2x and a positive 2e to the 2x. So what we conclude from this is that the partial derivative of m with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x. And that proves that the equation we've been given is in fact an exact differential equation. Now we need to go ahead and talk about how to find the solution to this exact differential equation, which we're going to do by finding the function psi of xy. So how do we go about finding psi of xy? Well, we're going to do another little proof here, and we're going to start with these two facts again. We're just going to rewrite them. So here we have the partial derivative of psi with respect to x, which we can rewrite as psi with respect to x. Then we have that equal to the function m, and we'll just call it m like this. We also have the partial derivative of psi with respect to y, so we'll say psi sub y is equal to just the function n. Now remember we're looking for the original function psi and here on the left hand sides of these equations we have partial derivatives of psi. This one with respect to x and this one with respect to y. So we want to get back to the original psi function. Well because this is the derivative of psi with respect to x if we integrate with respect to x then that will reverse the derivative process and just get us back to psi. Of course, if we do that to the left-hand side of the equation, we also have to do it to the right-hand side of the equation. And over here, we could do the same thing. Because we have the derivative with respect to y, we could take the integral with respect to y, but we'd have to take the integral with respect to y. And so because we're integrating with respect to x, the derivative with respect to x, those two things are inverse operations. We'd just be left with psi over here on the left is equal to the integral of m dx, or over here, because we're integrating with respect to y, the derivative with respect to y, those are inverse operations that cancel, and we'd be left with psi is equal to the integral of n dy. In other words, we can find psi in one of two ways. We can either integrate m with respect to x, or we can integrate n with respect to y. So what you want to do is look at the equation that you've been given, and figure out which of these functions, m or n, is easier to integrate. In our case, they're pretty much equally simple to integrate, so let's just go ahead and pick the function m, which is the one underlined here in orange, the first one. So that means we'll use this integral here, so we're going to say psi is equal to the integral of m, which is 2xy to the negative 1 plus 2y e to the 2x minus 1, and we're integrating with respect to x, so we go ahead and say dx. Now we're going to integrate, so we'll say psi is equal to, remember we're integrating with respect to x, which means we're holding y as a constant, so this y to the negative 1 is going to stay here with the 2. The integral of x is 1 half x squared. That 1 half will cancel with the 2, so we'll just be left with x squared y to the negative 1. Then we look at this term, the 2y is going to be like a constant coefficient. The integral of e to the 2x is 1 half e to the 2x. The 1 half will cancel with the 2, and we'll just be left with y e to the 2x. Then the integral of negative 1 is going to be minus x. And of course now we have to account for the constant of integration. But remember, we just integrated a multivariable function in terms of x and y, but we integrated with respect to x. So we really didn't account for the integration with respect to y, which means instead of just adding c for the constant of integration, we need to add a function in terms of y. So we go ahead and say plus h y. Now we have a function, psi of xy, right? This is the function for psi in terms of x and y. But we need to find a value for h of y. The way that we're going to find a value for h of y is by taking the derivative of this equation with respect to y. So remember we started with this integral here, psi is equal to the integral of m with respect to x. So we integrated with respect to x. Now we want to take the derivative with respect to the other variable, in this case y, because that will allow us to find a value for h of y. So, taking the derivative with respect to y, we're going to say psi sub y, or the partial derivative of psi with respect to y. We're going to hold x constant, so this x squared will be a constant coefficient. The derivative of y to the negative 1 is going to be negative x squared y to the negative 2, when we subtract 1 from the exponent. 
is e to the 2x will be like a constant coefficient. The derivative of y will be 1, so we'll just be left with e to the 2x. The derivative of negative x with respect to y is just going to be 0, and the derivative of h of y will just be h prime of y. Now the important thing to realize is that on the left hand side here we have the partial derivative of psi with respect to y. So here we have psi with respect to y. Well of course that's the same thing as up here, the partial derivative of psi with respect to y. We know that the partial derivative of psi with respect to y is equal to the function n. So we can replace the left hand side over here with the function n, which is what we've underlined in green. So instead of the partial derivative of psi with respect to y, we'll go ahead and replace this left hand side with this function here, and we'll get e to the 2x plus y squared minus x squared y to the negative 2 is equal to our right hand side. And now we just compare the left and right hand sides. So if we look at the left hand side, we have e to the 2x on the left, and we have e to the 2x on the right, so of course if we subtracted e to the 2x from both sides, they would cancel. We have on the left here a negative x squared y to the negative 2, and on the right we have a negative x squared y to the negative 2, so those will cancel with one another. And all we're left with then is y squared is equal to h prime of y. But remember, we don't need a value for h prime of y, we need a value for h of y here in order to find a function for psi. So we want to integrate both sides with respect to y. So we're going to integrate with respect to y, we're going to integrate with respect to y, and when we do that over here on the left, we'll get one third y cubed plus k. We use k to account for the constant of integration. And on the right hand side, instead of h prime of y, of course we'll just end up with h of y. Now we have this value for h of y that we can plug in here for h of y to find an equation for psi. So plugging one third y cubed plus k in for h of y here, we get psi is equal to x squared y to the negative 1 plus y e to the 2x minus x, and then here's where we plug in for h of y, plus one third y cubed plus k. Now, the general or implicit solution to this exact differential equation is actually found by taking the right-hand side here, this function for psi, and setting it equal to c. So we would get c is equal to everything from the right-hand side. Then, of course, because we have two constants, the constant c and the constant k, we could subtract k from both sides, and we would get c minus k on the left. k would cancel on the right, so we just have c minus k is equal to the rest of the right-hand side. And then because these are both constants, we can actually combine them together, and we'll just use one constant to represent both. So instead of c minus k, we'll just put c. And this is the general or implicit solution to the exact differential equation. Now, the reason that that works, the reason that we can just set this whole right-hand side equal to c, is because of this little proof here that I'll show you. So we actually start with this equation up here. This is the standard form for an exact differential equation, as we already know. But we know that m of xy is equal to the partial derivative of psi with respect to x. So we can replace m of xy with psi with respect to x, so partial derivative of psi with respect to x. We know that n of xy is the partial derivative of psi with respect to y, so we can say plus the partial derivative of psi with respect to y. That's multiplied by dy over dx is equal to zero. Then this gets a little fancy, but the left-hand side of this is actually equal to the derivative with respect to x of psi of xy, the function psi of xy. And basically what we mean by that is that if we had some multivariable function psi of xy like we have down here, right, we found psi of xy right here. So if we had that function and we took the derivative of it with respect to x, what we would get back is this left-hand side. It would actually be the partial derivative of psi with respect to x plus the partial derivative of psi with respect to y times dy over dx. And we would do that using chain rule for multivariable functions in order to take the, the derivative of the function psi of xy. So we're really just reversing that process and saying that this left-hand side is the same as this left-hand side. And I won't really get into any more detail than that, but these left-hand sides are equal to each other. And what we can say then is that if we integrate both sides, because remember we're trying to get back to the original function psi of xy, if we integrate both sides, then the integral and derivative operations here on the left will cancel, leaving us with only psi of xy on the left, and then on the right-hand side we have the integral of zero. Well, of course, the derivative of any constant is zero, which means that the integral of zero is going to be some 
constant, which we call c. And here's the conclusion of the proof. We say that psi of xy, the function psi of xy, is equal to c. And that's why when we got to this step, we said psi was equal to this function here. This value on the left here of psi, this stands for psi of xy, and this psi of xy, since we know psi of xy is equal to c, we can plug c in for psi here and get c is equal to the right hand side and then combine c and k and end up with this function c is equal to and then the multivariable function on the right hand side. So this here is just a proof to show you that you can set psi of xy equal to c. But obviously you don't need to go through this process when you're working through the steps to find this implicit or general solution. Now, one last thing about exact differential equations. Sometimes you'll be given an initial condition. They'll turn this into an initial value problem. And you'll be given the initial condition, let's say for example, y of 0 is equal to 3 and you'll be told to find an explicit solution instead of an implicit or general solution. Well, in that case, here you know that x is 0 and that y is 3, so you would just plug in 0 for x and 3 for y over here on the right-hand side. You'd find a value for c, and then you'd state the explicit solution as whatever that value for c that you found. That value is equal to just this right-hand side here, and that would be an explicit solution. But in this case, of course, we weren't given an initial condition, so we just have to leave our final answer as the implicit or general solution, c is equal to, and then this entire right-hand side. That's the general solution for this exact differential equation that we were given.